We have some breaking news for you Lakers fans as Max Christie is signing a four-year deal to return to the Los Angeles Lakers. What's going on, guys? Welcome into the Lakers Report by Chat Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman, and coming up on today's show, we're going to be going over the Max Christie extension, give you guys the contract details there. And then also I wanted to dive into the report that we got that the Lakers could be trading for Jeremy Grant. And then also, could LeBron be taking a pay cut to help bolster this Lakers roster. Now, before we dive into that, I want to show Max Christie some support on today's show. If you guys could go down in the comment section, type his initials, give me an MC down below in the comments to show him some support as, you know, he's going to be a member for this Lakers team for the foreseeable future. So show him some love, type his, or type his initials MC down below. So this was coming in from Woj. He tweeted out ESPN sources, restricted free agent guard Max Christie instead intends to sign a four year $32 million deal to stay with the Lakers. The deal includes a player option and Christie was the 35th pick in the 2020 to draft and he has shown promise as a future LA rotational player so I think this is a good deal for the Lakers I mean 32 million over four years is not bad whatsoever I mean that's eight million dollars per year for you know a guy who you're hoping can develop into a championship rotation or a championship piece that's like the seventh eighth man in the rotation and you know from what I've seen from Christie over the past couple of seasons with the Lake show like the thing I've loved the most is he hasn't really gotten to you know too much chance to you know prove himself as like a true rotational player just yet because you know he's averaging only 13 and a half minutes per game throughout his career has only started 10 games but the thing I love the most about him um, we've seen that three-point shot really develop his rookie year he shot at 35.6 percent and then this past season he was damn near at 42 percent at 40 1.9 again this is not on high volume this was only him you know taking one and a half one uh, point eight threes per game over the first two seasons and the stat sheet it's not going to blow you away only averaging three points half of assist and two rebounds this past year but the thing I love about Christie he fights defensively like he's a really solid point of attack defender moves his feet laterally very very well has a quick first step and I think he's a guy you know when the Lakers did take him you know, in the 2022 draft, they viewed him as a developmental piece. So what are the Lakers doing with this deal? They're banking on that guy in two years to be on one of the most favorable deals in the NBA. Because if he turns himself into, you know, really good, you know, lead defensive guard, can knock down the three-point ball at a high level, and maybe create some offense for some other players, and he's like your sixth, seventh, eighth man coming off the bench, only making $8 million, hopefully we're looking at this deal as, you know, a very team friendly deal so I think it's great move for the Lakers and Max Christie to get this done as you know free agency is about 30 minutes away right now but I do want to dive into this report that we got um, around Jeremy Grant and the Los Angeles Lakers so Jeremy Grant he's an interesting player he's got a you know he's what hasn't been the most winning player throughout NBA history his overall winning percentage is at only 42 he dealt with the rebuilding 76ers dealt with the Oklahoma City Thunder then he went to the Nuggets and he went to the Pistons where you know he really established himself as a true 20 point a game guy in the league now what would this deal look like? I'm assuming it'd be like Rui, the match contracts. Maybe they throw in D'Lo. I'm really not too sure on the trade package, but let's just talk about fit right here. And this is maybe when, or maybe why I'm a little confused that the Lakers could be targeting Jeremy Grant. Maybe they think they could get him on, you know, a cheap deal in terms of what they would have to give up for him. But, you know, the fit there, like Jeremy Grant plays, you know, a three, four hybrid where he is a, you know, a big three and a small four has that stretch four ability, but you know, the thing that confuses me here is, like, if the Lakers would go bring in Jeremy Grant, I think this would solidify Anthony Davis playing the five. And, you know, we heard AD is not the biggest fan of playing the five. He would rather have a traditional center next to him, you know, to get the most out of this game. And I agree with that. I think that's when AD is at its best, when he is that four and he is, you know, just – you know, a freak athlete at that four position. And it helps to have like a Jonas Valanciunas type of center or just a big body, you know, to help carry the load defensively and on the glass. So like the Jeremy Grant edition, you would be running out Bron, Jeremy Grant, and Anthony Davis. I just don't necessarily know how that fit would work. Um, in terms of talent, though, 
the Lakers would be getting significantly better. Like, Jeremy Grant is no scrub by any means. Like, he has three-point ability. He can guard multiple positions. You know, I think he, you know, pushes the pace really well in transition. And, you know, those are, like, parts of his game that I really love. And I think he could be a huge contributor, you know, to a championship team if he's in the right spot. But with where the Lakers are right now, I think, like, does Jeremy Grant fit the you know biggest need on this Lakers roster no I think they need an over-the-top score because you know Bron and AD they're going to put pressure on the rim over and over again they need a guy who's going to create offense at that one or two position better than D'Lo now D'Lo he was great after the trade deadline but again we saw the postseason struggles and I just think you know are you going to trust D'Angelo Russell to be your point guard in the playoffs anymore? I, I really don't think so. So I could see the Lakers moving on. But, you know, I just think if the Lakers are going to make a move for somebody, have it be Klay Thompson. Maybe you go all in on Trey Young. Maybe you go get a guy like, you know, Zach Levine and over the top score. I would prefer them go, you know, that route over the Jeremy Grant. So in terms of a Jeremy Grant trade, I don't necessarily think it makes – or I don't necessarily think it makes too much sense for the Lakers, but, you know, you definitely need more talent. And, you know, maybe LeBron could be, you know, willing to take a pay cut to make that happen. But let's talk about that. LeBron James taking a pay cut. Here's my take on it, and it's, you know, it's a hot take, and I've been telling people here in the office that, you know, this is my bold prediction of the Lakers offseason. I think LeBron James is going to take a significant, significant pay cut when he re-signs with the Lakers. He opted out of that player option for a reason. And, you know, some people said, oh, it's because he wants to make $50 million a year. Okay, I understand that. But I think LeBron understands that if he wants the best chance to win a championship, he cannot be making $50, $40 million per year. And also, if you're LeBron James, what a better accomplishment would be than if you took this Lakers team to the championship with Bronny on the roster with J.J. Redick as a head coach, all moves that necessarily you had a big part, you know, in that. Could you imagine what we would be saying about LeBron if the Lakers won and won a championship this past season and he took a pay cut because maybe they could go out, get Klay Thompson for $20 million, go all in on another player, and you have an absolute stacked team because you necessarily, like, if you gave LeBron James or if LeBron, like, let's just say took a $5, $10 million or even $20 million deal, like, that would be one of the best contracts, or if not the best contract in the entire NBA, and then you build a loaded team around him, like, it would almost give a San Francisco 49ers feel with Brock Purdy, like, where they have such a loaded team around him, but, um, you know, Brock Purdy can obviously elevate a lot of those guys, and LeBron would take it to a whole, whole nother level, but, you know, I could really see LeBron taking a pay cut in free agency and maybe going out and, you know, I just can't get over Clay. I can't shake Clay coming to the Lakers because we know how good and we know how you know valuable shooters like he um, is are around a guy like LeBron James. So I could really see LeBron taking a pay cut during free agency. That's kind of like my bold prediction of what's going to happen uh, here shortly. But guys, make sure you guys are subscribed here to the channel. You know, free agency is underway. You guys are going to be uh, you know not wanting to miss out on anything around your Lakers. We got about 30 minutes from now before the window actually opens and moves are going to be flying off the show. So make sure you guys are subscribed, hit that notification bell and lock us in as your go-to Lakers YouTube channel. But big news of the day so far, Max Christie intends to return to the Lakers on a four year, $32 million deal. Touched on the Jeremy Grant stuff is I just don't necessarily think it's the best fit. Don't know if that would happen. And also the idea of LeBron taking a pay cut. I think it's going to be a whole lot more likely than people do think. But thank you guys so much for watching today's show. Make sure you have hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. See you all next time. Go Lakers.